us to the fourth episode in a series of episodes that are focused on the 2020 GCE Science Paper 2, which is chemistry. So the first episode covered the section A of this paper, then episode 2 looked at question B1, then episode 3 looked at question B2. So if you haven't seen these episodes, please check out on our YouTube channel. So let us look at question B3. The grid below represents part of the periodic table. Start it and answer the questions using the letters. The letters are not the actual symbols of the elements. So we have that extract from the periodic table. Question A. An element V has atomic number 7. Indicate the position of V on the grid. Okay, so what we are required is to indicate the position. So if you look at the atomic number of V, you see 7. So if you are to do electronic configuration of V, which has 7 electrons, it will be 2 in the first shell, then 7 minus 2 is 5. So this V should be in group 5 because it has 5 electrons in its outermost shell. So we have group 1, then group 2, then we have group 3, then group 4, group 5, 6, 7, then 8. So V should be in group 5. Then when we look at V, it has how many shells? It has two shells. So this should be in period 2. So this is period 1, this is period 2, 3, 4, 5. So it will have period 2, then group 5. So we we'll move in here up to this point. So this is where V should be. So this is what you need to do. Do the electronic configuration, then the number of shells tells you the period in which this V would be. Question B, explain why the atomic radius of E is bigger than that of R. So, why is E going to have a bigger radius than R? So, you notice that E is to the left of R. So now what determines the atomic radius of a given element? It is the number of protons. So if you look at E, because E is on the left of R, it will have fewer protons. Thus, R will have a greater effective nuclear charge which will draw its valence of electrons closer to the nucleus. This means that R is expected to have a bigger radius than E. That's what we need to explain. So, because E is on the left of R, it will have fewer protons. So it is going to have fewer protons compared to E. Thus, R will have a greater effective nucleus charge to draw its valence electrons closer to nucleus. So let me just get space here. Thus, 
E is expected to have a bigger radius than R. That's the case. So just to put it in context, if you look at where E and R are, they are all in period D3, E is in group 6, R is in group 7. So let us go to the periodic table. So if you look at the periodic table, group 3 is this one, then group 7 is this one, then this is group 6. So what we have is we have this one and this one. You notice that this is E, then this is R. So E has 16 protons, then R has 17. So R has one more proton greater than that of E. So because R has more protons, it's going to have more nucleus charge, which will be pulling it towards the center. Hence R is going to have a smaller radius compared to E because E has less positive charge so the pool will be smaller than that of R. So this is the logic behind the answer. Question C. Which element has the highest tendency to gain electrons? So the element that gains electrons are non-metals. So if you look at nanometers, which one is more reactive? So the activity of nanometers increases as you go upward, with fluorine being the most reactive. Then the activity of metals increases as you move down the group. So the one that has the highest tendency to gain electrons is CR, because Arrogins are the most reactive non-metals. So the answer here is R. We move to the next question. Question D. Select the most reactive metal. So this one I've already explained. So the most reactive metals are found in group 1 and the one at the bottom. Because as you move down, the activities of metals increases. So C is the correct answer. So C, in this case, is the answer. Question E, write the formula of a compound formed when B reacts with E. So let us look at these elements. So what is the valence of B? B has the valence of 1. So B is willing to donate 1 electrons to have a full outer most shell. Then E is willing to receive two electrons which is gaining two electrons to have a full outermost shell so the valence of e is a two the valence of b is a one so we'll come here b as a valence of one then e as a valence of two so what you do is we close the valence so meaning b we have now two at the bottom then e one so this is just the same as B to E. So B to E is in the answer. So to find the formula of a compound, the first thing that you do is identify the valence of each element. Then close the valence from the top to down. Then you simplify the valences. Once you simplify this one, what you get is the formula. So this is how you answer this question to get the 5 marks. Thank you for joining me in this episode. If you find this episode to be helpful, please consider liking, sharing with your friends who might find this video helpful. So join me in the next episode as I look at question B4. Thank you viewers for watching this episode. If you find this video to be helpful, please consider liking. And also, if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. By liking, subscribing, and sharing, you are going to help us improve our visibility. A simple like from you makes a big difference. So once you subscribe to our channel and go to our channel, you discover that we've got so much content. So we've got 
mathematics are based on vision questions of course physics of course a chemistry then of course also topic based uh, section for all the subjects and this is uh, the best uh, section for you if you're having any challenges in uh, any particular topic